In this video, we're going to talk about compasses, specifically how to use a lensatic compass for land navigation. And we're also going to touch briefly on the differences between this lensatic compass and this base plate compass and other compasses in general. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So as I said, uh, we're going to talk about compasses. You may or may not know that I'm a scoutmaster, have been involved with the Boy Scouts for multiple decades. And one of the Boy Scout skills, I think, which really every adult should know, is how to use a compass. And if you weren't in the military, like I wasn't, uh, this style compass, the base plate compass, is probably something you're more familiar with than this style compass, the lensatic compass. Uh, this is the actual, the actual compass which is issued to the US military here. This is a Kaminga Model 3H. And we'll talk about the differences between these two in just a minute. But first of all, I want to say thanks to the folks at Optics Planet for sending me this so I could use this for this demonstration because this is the premier lensatic compass in my opinion. Uh, USA made from the folks at Kamenga. Again, this is the uh, same compass that is issued to our men and women in uniform. Uh, it features tritium so it glows at night and it doesn't need any external light. Pretty cool stuff. We make, we'll talk about that as we, as we go along. But this is the compass I've been using for a long time. This is a Suunto MC2. Um, and it is a, a very, very good compass. So both these are very good compasses. But uh, I think there's a reason that the military uses this style. And if you're, if, in my opinion, um, this one may be a little easier to, to, to learn to use, but this one is absolutely, probably has the potential, I think, to be a little more accurate. So um, I'm rambling already. So let me just take you down to the old picnic table for a minute. Let's talk really briefly about uh, the different st t styles of compass you may be familiar with. We'll touch on basic use of a compass, and I'll show you about the details of, of how to specifically use the lensatic compass. So let's get to doing some compass stuff. Okay, so here are several different compasses. I just want to give you a real quick rundown on a couple different style compasses. First of all, this is a lensatic compass. This is the Kamenga tritium version. This is the uh, H3H, which signifies tritium. This is the same compass, again, that is issued to the military. Uh, this is one of the best compasses in the world, in my opinion. Uh, this is another uh, style lensatic compass. This is kind of a, a nostalgic classic style. You notice there's no base plate on here or whatever. This one's by UST. And this, one, this one is around 20 bucks or so. Uh, the Kamanga is around 90 bucks for the tritium and about 60 bucks with no tritium. This is a Suunto MC2 uh, navigational compass, sometimes called a base plate compass or a uh, orienteering compass. It's a really, really nice compass. Very nice there. This one's around the $50 range. This is just my old Boy Scout um, kind of a disc compass, and you know it's, it's liquid filled. It works pretty good, um, but it's definitely not in, in the class of these of these. And this one's probably not either, to be honest with you. And then finally, here's this, my Cento Clipper compass. It's a watch band compass. Um, very just a, a handy way to have general direction. And then if you really want to go all oh, high tech, you can go with something like this. This is the uh, Casio electronic compass. This is a Casio ProTrek watch and one of the functions is a compass and that's pretty cool there too. But in my opinion, if you really want to do some serious land navigation, only two of these here are, 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 are candidates for that. The uh, lensatic compass and the uh, base plate compass or orienteering style compass. Both these are very, very functional, useful compasses for land navigation, for finding your way. And they, they each have their slight differences and pros and cons. So what I thought we'd do is I'm going to pull out a map here, kind of show you the basics of you know, um, how you use a compass with a map. And then we'll talk about transferring that to a, uh, an actual field, shoot, shooting an azimuth or a bearing in the field and how to use that um, specifically with the um, lensatic compass. Okay, so before we talk about how to use this compass to find your way, so we need to have a basic framework of what you're going to be trying to do. So um, I've got a map here. This is not a map of where we're at, but this is a map of, of the Blood Mountain area up in North Georgia. And if you look closely at the map, let me just zoom you in here for a minute. You'll see, first of all, there's a little legend on the map here. And that tells you that there's a magnetic north, three degrees grid north. And so this is your north. So if you're trying to get from here to here on the map, you want to know which direction to go. If you're going to use a compass to find that direction, the first step is going to be to align your map with correct north-south 
orientation. And the best way to do that is just put your straight edge of your compass on the magnetic north line, which is going to be about right here, and then just spin it around, spin it like so, let me get up here away from those bolts, and so that, so you can see that the north arrow and the direction of travel arrow are in line. So now your map is pointing in the right direction. So if you're here on the trail and you want to go to here across country without the trail, then you're going to want to put your your straight edge on the where, where you are and aim it towards where you want to go. And then you can see now your north arrow is no longer touching your direction of, of travel. So you're holding your compass still, you want to turn your, your, your wheel until your index mark here is, is lined with north. Then, focus grasshopper, take a look at your dial and you'll see that we are at about 310 degrees. So we want to go 310 degrees. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so after you've used your map and compass to figure out which direction you want to go, how do you use the compass to make sure you're going in that direction? So let me see if I can tilt you down. Bear with me. I do not have a cameraman here, so uh, me and Mr. Tripod are going to try to make this work. Okay, so we got a little bit of a glare here. Try to work around that, but if you can see, you see the 310 degrees about right there. So that's where we want to go. And the goal is you want to put the needle um, I used to call it putting the needle in the doghouse, but you want to line up the uh, your bezel indicator with the north-south arrow. That, mean, that lets you know that north is that away, and we're going to go that away, 310 degrees. So, if you, if you'll notice, I've got this thing about 310 degrees now. If you look straight up that way, you'll see there's a pretty good-sized tree right there at 310 degrees. So you're going to want to. Look as far as you can in the distance and find yourself a landmark. Here's how you do that. I'm going to show you this from the side and then we'll turn around and, and try to show you through the camera. So we've got this little, this little lens, that lens here, which is why it's called a lensatic compass. You notice there's a notch on top of the lens here. There's a, uh, a notch, a sighting thing here. So that's kind of like a, a gun sight, really. And they say to put your thumb in here. You can do that. Just kind of hold it. But you want to bend this down where you're looking through the lens. And you can see it's magnified, and you'll see that in a minute. You can see the numbers here. You want to get to, to where everything's lined up, and then you want to tilt this down, and you're going to kind of look through the sight, and that's going to, through this notch to the sight pin, and, and that's going to what you're going to line on your target. You want to pick a target out at the, the bearing you're looking at, the, the azimuth, the degrees of direction that you want to go, however you want to say that. Pick a target out as far as you can so you've got something you can walk to. You don't have to keep looking at your compass all the time. You pick that target, you know, okay, I can walk towards that target, and you can kind of ignore your compass until you get there. Then you just repeat the process and keep going. So, so basically, you want to look down like this, and find your, get, you're going to turn yourself around so that your north arrow is lined up with your index on the bezel. You're going to look through here. You're going to look down till, till you got exactly where it needs to be. You can see it through this little magnifier then. And then just tilt down a little bit. Look through your sight window like you're aiming a gun and pick your target. And they say meld it, weld it on your cheek. That's just so you're, you're very solid. I find it's easier just to hold it right here in front of me. I like my elbows down like so instead of doing like this because because these glasses I'm wearing are, are progressive lenses and they don't focus that close. So anyway, there's that. So let me see if I can get you um, where you can see it through the camera. We're going to try. We're going to try. Okay, you can sort of see it, can't you? So you look through the little magnifying glass to get to 310 degrees. And that's about right there, right? So we're almost there. Now if you just look up through the siding, and just keep looking up. I'm going to get up here and see it. It should be, you see the tree right out there. We'll call it that one. We'll call it 300 degrees because I can't do it. It's the best I can do with my, with my video camera. So there's the tree. Once you've got that, and you can even see there's a notch up here. You can kind of use that to kind of line everything up. Once you've got that, you just walk to that tree. And then you repeat the process. So again, you can look through here. You're going you're to line this up with the 310. And then you're going to look through the notch and through your siding wire here. And there you go. And then, of course, what's good about this, if you don't have a landmark, and I'm doing it sideways so you really can't see that. Once you've got your set where your north arrow is lined up with your index button, if you make sure that north arrow stays lined up with the index mark from the bezel, um, then as long as you keep that lined up, you'll be walking in the right direction. So 
that wasn't that complicated. Um, I think the problem some people have is this is a very, very well constructed, made in the USA, very good compass. The, uh, the lens on it is very good. It's very clear. Everything's very clear. Some lower priced lens added compasses I've seen, they don't focus very well. They just, they're, they're not as precise as this one. So, um, Again, this is this is the this is in my opinion the absolute top of the line lensatic compass in the world. So um, <laughs> there is that, right? Okay, well, that was hopefully not a too disjointed look at the basics of how to use a lensatic compass. In this case, the Comega 3H Tritium lensatic compass, which is the same one that the U.S. military uses. Um, there's a lot of mystery. A lot of people think this is very complicated. It's really, really the same as using. Uh, pretty much a, a base plate compass. The, the main difference again is instead of looking at a mirror, you're actually sighting down through the, through the magnifying glass and it just really does give you a, the, the, the very fine notch here combined with the sighting wire gives you a very, very precise aiming point. So if you're traveling long distances or maybe there's not a lot of landmarks you can, you can get close to, you can find a landmark way in the distance and you can uh, really zero in on it with this thing. So, um, Hopefully this has been helpful. I'm trying to do some more some more uh, videos about compass and map basics um, coming up soon in the future. So if there's something you'd like to see specifically covered, leave it in the comments below. Once again, thanks to the folks at Optics Planet for sending me this so I could use this in kind of this demonstration video. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a couple of new videos every week on Friday and Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you don't want to miss a single one, I invite you to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter, survivalonpurpose.com forward slash subscribe. Just in case YouTube doesn't notify you, I will. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident. So be prepared. See you next time.